The Ascot scene in My Fair Lady is one of the most iconic moments in both the stage show with Julie Andrews and the 1964 film adaptation with uh, Audrey Hepburn. And the scene, set in an Ascot race course, uh, diverges from the original book. And it's pivotal in showcasing Eliza Doolittle's transformation from the Cockney flower girl to the refined lady. It's famous for its elaborate costumes, for its rude language. And the rude language got more, got progressively worse um, from the stage show to the film. Um, but it's, uh, it's particularly important for the stunning black and white ensemble worn by Miss Hepburn. It was created by Cecil Beaton. Well, I use the term loosely. He was a British photographer, designer, socialite, uh, gay icon who played a significant role in taking photographs of the Queen during the coronation and the visual presentation of My Fair Lady. The stage show um, was, I mean, he, he was responsible for the basic look of the stage scenery and of the costumes um, when the show premiered in 1956 um, and his designs were critical in creating a lavish and stylish atmosphere uh, that characterized the show his, uh, his 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 designs were then taken into the film um, in 1964 uh, equally significant, uh, but but he became quite prissy and quite possessive, uh, not only of the costumes and the basic design, which was then realised by other people, um, but, uh, but, but for example, the, the filming itself, he was particularly aggrieved that the Ascot horses were running in the wrong direction. Actually, they were running on fake turf, um, across a sound, a sound stage indoors, and uh, <laughs> just phenomenal film workmanship. And the the Ascot dress itself, which is um, on, have I got it right? That that side, it's on that side. The Ascot dress set with the amazing hat, um, worn by Audrey Hepburn, is probably one of the most memorable costumes in all cinema history um and th so that but there has been confusion and controversy regarding his actual construction so although Cecil Beaton uh was the designer the dress was constructed by the very talented wardrobe department of Warner Brothers so we don't actually know who made that dress if somebody if somebody has more information than I've got please leave the details below um the, the but but I think this this was made by unknown seamstresses and tailors who brought Beaton's elaborate sketches to reality. And these dresses were, all, all the dresses in that scene were almost impossible to, 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 to sit down in. People, were, pe pe people were, were, were left on planks of wood, resting, having cups of tea and so on. Um, and uh, it's, um, the, the controversy stems from the fact that while Beaton was credited as the designer of the craftsmanship, the construction of the costumes, the construction of the scenery uh, was the work of all these unsung professionals in the studio's many artistic uh, departments. So in a striking moment yesterday uh, at the Trooping of the Colour, the um, Sovereign's Parade, the Princess of Wales appeared to channel the iconic Ascot dress worn by Audrey Hepburn, and the appearance was significant for several reasons, of course. First of all, the fashion choice, the monochromatic black and white ensemble, uh, uh, this nod to the classic past, this nod to timeless elegance. Um, you know, you can't, you can't fail but to notice that. And then the brisk walk from the carriage with her three children and the subsequent appearance on the balcony Scotched rumours and gossip about whether or not she would return to public life. She will. She is. And the Princess of Wales' poised and confident presence uh, reaffirmed her role at the centre of the royal family uh, 
her role in public engagements, her commitment to her duties. And by channeling this iconic look, the Prince of Wales not only paid homage to a significant moment in fashion and film history, but reinforced her own position as a modern style icon. This film, this film and the scene uh, remains a standout moment in both the stage and the film versions, largely thanks to the iconography set up by Cecil Beaton and the Ascot dress. Um, you know, although it was designed by him, although it was made by other people, um, it. It, it it remains a one of uh, one of those um one of those iconic things it is an icon and it is quite sensational and audrey hepburn carries it off with a plum with a plum though i i i've, I've got one of the old souvenir programs from the london production with Julie Andrews, and there are photographs of her wearing um, striking, striking uh, clothes for that scene, um, and 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 <laughs> with a with a teacup. Um, and I wish I'd been old enough to see that show, and its turnstiles and its uh, it, its elaborate scenery, which she which she recreated in a production for the Australian stage a few years ago. Um, but sadly, it wasn't recreated here, and I, I think that's a yeah that that, that that that's something rather rather regrettable. There was a recent revival of My Fair Lady, which um, played in the London Coliseum with a full orchestra, but the scenery was second rate. Yeah, even even if the performances were wonderful, the 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 scenery was was cheap, shoddy, and simply not up to it and and this is one of the problems L like opera the stage musical is a celebration of all of, of this wedding of all of these um arts the the lyricism the the lyrics the music and the design and the choreography those those, those four features and take one of them away and the musical is simply not not up to scratch um and then you can add the star quality or or whatever sadly today even the biggest musicals in the west end um there's a lot of there's a lot of tracks which is which are um which are uh, embellished with a, with with a little bit of um live orchestra but but when you go to the shows i'm afraid you're listening to a lot of tracks and and that that that's really sad so it's a great joy to go to a show where there isn't where is a genuinely live orchestra and 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 as somebody's been on stage um i i can say it's there are positives about tracks because uh, certainly if you've got a dance you you know that the uh, that the music is always going to be the same. But if you've got to sing, that's the problem. The music is always the same. And your performance each night is slightly different because the audience is different. And that relationship um, adds pauses and, and, and lengthens notes in a way that is um, organic. And it cannot be organic if you, if you are racing to meet the track.